At dakilang uh, Diyos na aming mapagmahal na Ama. Maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na ito. Sa gabi aming pagtitipon-tipon. Uh, Hinihiling po namin na inyong gabay. At tulungan niyo po kami maunawaan ang uh, nakasaad sa isinulat ni Apostol na Pablo. Tulungan niyo po kung uh, ito'y uh, may yukit sa aming puso at kaisipan. At uh, naway ma kita namin ang uh, katotohanan ng nakapaloob muli sa inyong salita ngayong gabi. Hinihiling po namin ang inyong banal na espiritu na siyang tumulong sa amin at uh, gumabay sa amin ngayong gabi sa kalang po ni Jesus. <coughs> Amen. Pugutahan natin na Romans 13. No? At tumatapos niyang uh, banggitin dito yung uh, <coughs> yung uh, uh, paalala sa mga mga ng palataya. Dahil nakaranas kayo ng habag, itong gawin niyo sa mga kapatiran, Itong gawin niyo sa mga umaalipin sa inyo, itong gawin niyo sa mga umaaway sa inyo, no? And then pagdating naman sa mga namamahala sa atin, binigyan niya ngayon ang ang sermon, kumaga pinaalala niya sa mga mananampalataya kung ano dapat ang maging attitude ng isang mananampalataya sa mga namumuno, no? Meaning sa uh, gobyerno, no? So basahin natin ang Romans chapter 13. Siguro basahin natin lahat yung kabuuan ng Romans 13 chapter uh, 13 verses 1 to 14. Yeah. Romans 13 let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. Verse 4, For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Verse 6, for because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers, attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, Honor to whom? Honor. Verse 8, Own no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there's any other commandment are all summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Verse 11, and do this knowing the time that now is, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believe. Verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in the revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. <clears throat> nice, thank you. Thanks, uh, TLV. All right, so... Magkita natin dito yung uh, ano ni Pablo, no? yung kanyang uh, pinanggit dito na uh, command. No? Na, so una, so yung chapter 13, pinanggit dito yung obligasyon ng mga mananapalataya patungkol sa uh, relasyon niya sa sumasakop sa kanya, hindi sa gobyerno. No? Sa gobyerno. Ano yung uh, kanyang command? Sambay niya, submit. No? Pasakop ka sa mga namamahala sa iyo. And then binagit niya doon yung uh, dahilan kung bakit tayo magpapasakop. Titignan natin mamaya yan. And then binagit na rin doon yung kahalagahan ng pagbibigay ng uh, buwis, pagbibigay ng buwis. No? And then uh, sinabi niya hanggat mari, walang utang. Ano yung utang na yun? Titignan natin mamaya yan. 
And then, pagdating sa utang, sinabi niya, bayaran niyo lahat na inyong utang hanggat maaari, ang hindi nila kaya bayar talaga ng ganap, yan pag mamahal. So, bakit yung binanggit yan? Dahil importante yung pagmamahal sa isa't isa. Again, binanggit niyan sa chapter 12. Remember yung sinabi niya, love must be sincere. No? And then, inulit niya ulit dito yung kahalagahan ng pagmamahal sa isa't isa. And then, yung last verses, 11 to 14, patungkol naman sa uh, malapit na ang oras, sinabi niya gano'n. No? Uh, yung kaganapan ng iyong pagkaligtas, yung kaganapan ng iyong kaligtasan yung malapit na, kaya tinakilang magbuhay na tayo ng uh, nararapat ng naayon sa liwanag. So, titignan natin isa-isa yung binanggit ni Pablo dito sa Romans 13. No? Uh, very practical. Practical application. And uh, uh, mahalaga makita natin dito yung Uh, pinupoint out ni Pablo. Now, nung sinabi ni Pablo na sa verse 1 ng chapter 15 na, ano sabi niya sa verse 1? Sabi niya doon? Is what? Everyone must submit himself to the governing authority. Maliwanan, di ba? Bawat isa dapat magpasakop sa governing authorities na mga namamahala. No? Namamahala sa inyo. O mga na, namumuno sa inyo. So, now, Nung sinabi ni Pablo yan na everyone must submit to those who are in authority, tignan natin yung konteksto. Sino yung namamahala ng panahon na sinulat ni Pablo ito sa mga taga-Roma? Siyempre yung Roman Empire. di ba? Sino ang uh, nagpako sa cruise sa ating Panginoon Jesus? It was through the Romans. Di ba? The, the Roman authorities. Di ba? Uh, sino yung nag-persecute sa mga disciples nung panahon na sinulat ni Pablo ito? Nag-persecute kay James na, na pinatay. Uh, the Romans, di ba? The Romans were the ones responsible for the death persecution of the believers, of the disciples. Yes? So taking that context, although, although ka, tulad, ka, kung bagay sa ano eh, may mga uh, para siya, mga kudyo, na para lang hindi sila guluhin ng mga Roman uh, authorities eh, nakikianib sila sa Roman authorities but in reality, uh, na, 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 nagsisikap silang mag-rebelde. No? Kaya nga meron uh, rebellious group ng panahon na, ng, ng first century church. But the point there is, nung sinulat ni Pablo yan, yung konteksto nun is uh, ayan, Roman authorities were the ones who crucified Christ, they were the ones persecuting the Christians, and they were the ones exacting taxes from from Everyone else, including Christians, mga believers, no? Kaya kami mga zealots eh, at that time, hindi mga nagre-rebelde sa Roman Empire, no? Ah, so, yun yung konteksto nun, and yet sinasabi ni Pablo, pasakop kayo. What is? Pasakop ta kayo sa mga namumuno sa inyo, no? Importante na makita natin ang dahilan kung bakit sinabi ni Pablo na pasakop. Despite the fact na alam niya na ang Roman authorities, Roman Empire was then responsible for the death of our Lord in the same time persecution of the Christians. No? Bakit niya sinabi na pasahot kayo? Ano ba yung pinakamang dahilan kung bakit niya sinabi na magpasahot kayo? Yung piniliwan niya sa verses 3 and 4. Di ba? Piniliwan niya. Bakit? Because God is the one who established them. Exactly. It is God who appointed or established the authorities. Pinilawan na eh. Bakit? Because the authorities will punish those who do not obey the authorities. May, may karampatang parusa, kaparusahan. Uh, remember, it was the Romans who crucified the Lord upon the prodding of the, of the, the Jews. Siyempre, no? Upon the prodding of the, of, of the, the public. Pero we have to understand na that was part of God's plan. Di ba? That Christ be offered up for the redemption of His people. So God establishes authorities, appointed appoint authorities, in order to fulfill His purpose. Kaya sinasabi ni Pablo dito, despite the fact na alam niya responsible ang Roman Empire sa sa pagkapahirap sa mga believers na sinasabi pa rin niya, submit to those who are in authority. Why? Because it is God who has established or appointed those who are in authority. Otherwise, if you do not, then you will have the fear of being punished. Yes? Inulit-ulit niya sa verse 5, di ba? You submit to authorities 
at binagit niya na magkaharoon ng kaparusahan at dahil sa conscience. Ano yung conscience na yun? Yung consciousness of God's will. Consciousness of God's being in control. Kaya ang binagit niya sa verse 67 na ito, sinabi niya, kaya kinakailangan ninyong bayaran ng inyong mga buwis. Diba? Mga buwis. Magbabay ba tayo na buwis? Magbabay tayo, diba? We are to pay taxes. That's one way of what? Submitting to those who are in authorities. Very important na malaman natin na God is sovereign. God is in control. God is the divine what? Divine sovereign. Siya yung namumuno. Siya ang nag-establish kung sino dapat namuno. Siya ang nag-decision kung sino dapat na mamahala. For what purpose? In order that His purposes may be achieved. Di ba? Kaya nga nung sinabi ko, maalala niyo, si, si Eddie Villanueva, di ba? Many years ago, tumagbong presidente. Sabi na, nakaradigdar siya ng tinig from God. Na dapat siya tumagbong presidente dahil siya magiging presidente. Ano nangyari? <coughs> Hindi tinig ng Diyos na pakinggan niya. Hindi tinig ng kanyang konsensya. O ng kanyang conviction na gusto tumakbo. Obviously, it wasn't God's plan. Why? Because it is God who establishes those who are in authority. No wonder, sabi nga ni Pablo, sabi ni, ni Douglas Moo, no? sabi niya, maybe that's the reason why Paul said, uh, do not uh, take vengeance, because vengeance is man, says the Lord. And one way by which vengeance is delivered is by way of having authorities who punish those who do not submit to those who are in authority. You know, it's a suggestion ni Douglas Moo. That is probably perhaps why uh, Paul said, do not take vengeance. Uh, pinagdiin na niya yung turo ng Panginoon Jesus na uh, wag eye for an eye, but ibigay mo yung kabilang kusin mo dahil it is the government ang siyang magpapataw ng kaparusahan dun sa mga gumawa ng pagkakamali sa iyo. So, everyone dito means dapat lahat. Okay, lalo na sa mga believer. And as mga Christians, we have to submit to the governing authorities. Siyempre, kung sa mga governing authorities, tinutukin ito yung online. Mga namumuno, yung representative ng gobyerno. No? Submit. Mas mata, mas malawak ka sa ng submission kaysa sa obedient, no? To submit means to to be aware that you are under one's authority. Papasakop ka talaga, no? <clears throat> so to submit is not, simply not just obeying, but rather recognizing. Kasi kung minsan obedience ka ng sapilitan, di ba? Pag nag-obey ka, sapilitan ka. Sige na nga. Para wala masalim ni Jesus ko, magluto na nga lang ako, di ba? Medyo parang uh, sapilitan, di ba? Ayaw mo ng gulo. But when you submit, talagang you recognize the authority. Yes, kasi they are in authority, I will submit. No questions asked, di ba? So, the reason why Paul said that is because in, uh, God himself introduces, no? uh, Paul introduces the, the, the doctrine of God's sovereignty. Yung talagang siya ang nag-a-appoint, nag-designate ng namumuno. Binanggit din yan ni Daniel eh, di ba? Sa, <clears throat> tingnan ba yung sitwasyon tungkol sa panaginip ni Daniel at nung kanyang uh, kinaharap si King Nebuchadnezzar? Anong sabi na ni Daniel dito? The Most High is sovereign. He is above <coughs> over the kingdoms of the world. And God gives them to anyone who wishes and sets over them the lowliest of man. Diyos ang siya nag appoint It is God who appoints it is God who brings down. Yes? Hindi tayo, bagamat meron tayong eleksyon, bagamat meron tayong vote na ginagawa, lalo sa atin, marami na disappoint. Uh, natalo yung kanilang kandidato, marami na disappoint, iba na nalo. Hindi tayo dapat nadidisappoint. Why? Because God is in control. Diyos ang, ang may decision din. Why? Because God has a plan, God has a purpose. Hindi natin pwede i-criticize na, ah, si ganito nanalo, dinaya. Lalo sa ating mga Pilipinas, uh, uh, nung naging election lawyer ako siguro four, but four times ako naging election lawyer, palaging ganun. Ang kliyente ko ay laging talunan. Laging sinasabi, na, nadaya daw siya. Bawat kandidato na talo, laging sinasabi, talo. <laughs> nadaya. O, oh, nadaya daw. Diba? But sa pananang ng Kristiyano, we believe that it is God who has appointed the leader. No? Uh, yung present authority, remember, ah, sabi nga natin, nung panahon na binanggit ni Pablo ito, Christ was crucified. Disciples were being persecuted. Properties were being taken from Christians. Taxes were being exacted from, from the Roman. No? 
may at sabi ng Pablo, submit. No? Pag nag-rebelde tayo sa gobyerno, at simply are rebelling against God himself. Kaya nga, karapat dapat ba ng kristyano eh, sumasali sa mga protesta, hangari. No? We do not. Dahil, una, it destroys the testimony that we carry. Remember, we carry the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is a sensitive issue dahil, lalo sa panahon kay, ngayon, no? kunyari, eh, eh paano yung mga parada ng mga alangan eh? <laughs> mga hindi, hindi, uh, oh, LGBT, whatever it is, mga hindi tiyak. Di ba? Paano yung mga kanilang promotion, kanilang mga pagsasayaw? Hindi ba dapat natin tinututulan yan? Di ba? Remember, sabi nga natin, that is, ano eh, wala siyang pinagkaiba sa isang taong matuwid. Ibig sabihin, matuwid ng kasarian, pero eh, hin- hindi kinikilala ang Panginoon Jesus. Mas kinikilala ang sarili. Anong pinagkaiba nila? Wala. Kaya kong Christless. Di ba? So, ang mas mahirap dito is when the government now, ito mahirap sa atin. Pag ang gobyerno, legitimizes na ngayon, halimbawa, yung pag isang dibdib ng parehong kasarian. Yes. So, ito ngayon ang gobyerno sinasabi, pwede na. Pwede na mag-isawa ang babae sa babae, lalaki sa lalaki. Ito si Pablo, sabi niya, submit to those who are in authorities. How do you reconcile that? Ito ngayon, lalo recently, dito sa atin, ma? nagkaroon ng uh, issue na yung minister kinasuhan dahil uh, ay niyang magkasal ng parehong kasarihan. And yet here is the authority, here is the government saying, no, pwede nang mag-asama ang parehong kasarihan. And here is Paul saying, everyone, submit to those who are in authority. How do you, con- how do you connect that? Sa mahirap kang balansin, sa akin siguro, I will, I will find ways within the legal system no? na sabihin na, well, they're not members of my church. A requirement for me to marry them is that they are members of my church. And because they are not members of my church, I will not marry them. Siguro yun ang isang legal loophole na pwede mong pasukin. You're not rejecting, you're not rejecting the government, you're not rebelling against the government dahil meron din sa constitution natin merong religious freedom. Alright? Religious freedom. So lahat ng legal loophole, kumbaga, na pwede mong pasukin, try to avail of it, without rebelling against the government, but at least, you know, babalansin mo na, a requirement is for them to be a member of my church. To be a member of my church, you have to ascribe to our statement of faith. Ang faith namin ganito. Siyempre, hindi sila maging miyembro. Walang discrimination doon. There's no, there's no, there's no discrimination dahil ayaw nila maging, ayaw nila tanggapin yung, yung ating professional faith. Okay? So, doon mo siya babalansin mo yun. Remember, sinabi ni Pablo at saka ni Peter yata, uh, sorry, ni Peter, ni Peter and ni, I think, uh, uh, Peter and James were there. No, sinabi niya, we would rather obey God than men. Diba? Sabi sa Acts, I think Acts chapter 12, somewhere there. It's important na balansihin natin doon. Uh, but still, it's important na hindi tayo rong rebel sa gobyerno. No? Because remember, sinabi ni Pablo, it is God who appoints those who are in authority. Uh, gagawin ba natin pag ganyan ba? Nag-gobel ka pa talaga dahil dapat tayo sabi natin sa gobyerno, oh, dapat hindi pinapas yung batas na ito. Well, uh, kanya-kanyang panalaw yun. No? Some scholars will say no because that is going against you know, um, scripture. Pagka ganun kasi parang we're putting, parang nilalagyan natin sa kamay natin yung kaganapan ng purpose ng Panginoon. God's purpose is only known to Him. And he establishes government to achieve, accomplish his purpose. Katulad nga nung na-crucify si Lord. Na? When Christ was, was crucified, it was in fulfillment of the prophecy, in fulfillment of God's plan, and the Roman Empire was what? Constituted, itinakda ng Diyos nang sa gayon maganap yung kanyang layunin. No? Para matubos yung kanyang mga tauhan. Importante na balansihin natin pagdating sa Ayun nga, uh, things that uh, uh, we can avoid, but rebelling against the government is not one of those things that dapat option natin. No? Sinabi niya, ang purpose kasi, bagamat, itinak, bagamat uh, lumalabag sila marahil sa iniutos ng Diyos, kinilala pa rin ni Pablo 
ng gobyerno daw eh, they act as God's servant. Eh paano naging God's servant yan eh? Unbeliever. Paano naging God's servant? Yung servant na ginamit doon, hindi lang purpose ni diakonos doon, but rather servant meaning servant in order to accomplish God's purpose, God's plan. Ang example nga doon is yung crucifixion of the Lord, the beheading of James, the beheading of the disciples, the persecution of the disciples. Okay? So when Paul said the government acts as servant, not really in service of God's you know, uh, proclamation of the gospel, but rather the accomplishment of God's purpose, the accomplishment of God's plan. No? So political officials are servants of God. Unconsciously, they are serving God's purpose in the world. So sabi ni Douglas mo, hindi na lang mga politiko na ang namumunod sila sa gobyerno, unaware of the fact, unconscious na they are actually serving God's purpose in the world. Of course, they have the right to punish because they are the ones in authority. No? Separate, right? why nating parusahan tayo ng gobyerno, we should what? We should obey. <laughs> we should obey, we should submit to those who are in authority. Bakit? Because God has ordained nabi natin those who are in authority for otherwise we will be punished and also because of conscience. And in conscience na yun, we are to submit to those in authority because of conscience, meaning we are aware that they have been appointed by God and they are serving God's purpose in this world. No? So importante yung full understanding na Diyos ang siyang talaga sa kanila. Bagamat binuboto natin, uh, instrumento lang tayo. Kumbaga, at the end of the day, it's God who designates or appoints leaders. No? And how how do we show, how, we, how do we demonstrate that we submit, kinikilala natin yung uh, sumasakop sa, ipapasakop tayo sa namamahala sa atin. Paano tayo natin pinapakita ang pagpapasakop? Paano natin pinapakita ang pagpapasakop? We pay taxes. Ano sabi ng verse 6? Pay your taxes. Bakit? For the adjoining God's servants. Because they are God's servants. Pag paano, kinukrapat naman nila yung tax na binabayaran ko eh. Let them be responsible before God. Pero hindi yun ang dahilan para hindi tayo magbayad ng buwis. Di ba? Kaya mo sila, mananagot sila sa Diyos. Di ba? Pero importante, obligasyon natin, bayaran natin ang ating buwis. Notice, ito, sinulat ni Pablo ito at the time na mga Kristiyano, mga followers of the Lord Jesus Christ were being persecuted, were being deprived of their property, yet taxes were being imposed. Yan yung sabi ni Pablo, everyone submit to those in authority, pay your taxes. Sabi, kung, kung napanahon tayo siguro na, na, na nabubuhay ng panahon ni Pablo, talaga it will blow your mind. Hindi ba kung nagsipay lang nila si Lord? Di ba? Tinagutan lang nila na uli mga ibang uh, disiplo ng Panginoon. And yet, ito ka, sasabihin mo, hasabit kami. Yes, kasi God has appointed them. They are God's servants so that they will accomplish God's plan for the world, for the future. No? And that is why we need to pay our taxes. Because they are God's servant. And then, sabi sa verse 7, Give everyone. Ano sabi sa verse 7? Ibigay mo. Sige, yeah, sa ibang version. Ano sabi? Give everyone what you are obedient. I'll give everyone. Ibigay mo sa bawat isa kung ano man ang alin. Utang mo. Utang mo. <laughs> Yung everyone na yun, more specifically, sa context, kung abasahin yung context ng verse 7, Pinutok niya dito yung authority. Everyone in authority. Kasi binanggit niya, bayaran mo yung taxes mo and customs or revenue. Diba? Taxes and revenue. Taxes, siyempre, mga buwis. Revenue would be yung mga fees. Government fees. But the point here is, the verse 7 ni Pablo, his point here is related to verse 6 in, in relation to paying of taxes. You have to pay every due or every amount or every money that is due to the authority, taxes, fees, customs, duties, uh, license fees, mga ganun. Ang panahon natin yun, mga license fees, no doubt. Why? Kasi sabi nga niya, they are ordained by God. Believers are to respect and honor governing authorities and submit 
inflation is demonstrated by the fact that we are paying our dues and taxes. Yes. Kung titignan mo talaga, it will blow your mind nung sinabi ni Pablo na sa men, di ba? Sa yung tayo nagrereklamo tayo kay inutro inutroy sang gobyerno yung ano pagpapakasal ng uh, parehong kasarian. Mas grabe ng panahon ni Pablo noon eh. Dahil inaaresto ang mga Kristiyano, inaaresto ang mga disipulo ng Panginoong Hesus. Yet here he is saying they are servants of God. So, may mga views, may mga scholars na nagsasabi, yung sinunod ni Pablo sa Romans 13, ano lang yan? Limited lang yan sa kanyang kapanahonan. Uh, kung babasahin mo yung buong 13, kaya nga makikita natin sa verses 11 to 14, hindi. Kasi sinasabi niya na the day of your salvation is near. It applies to all. It applies to all. Kasi ang kanyang naisip eh, nalalapit na ang kaganapan na yung kaligtasan. So hindi lang talaga sa confined sa panahon ng uh, Roma, ng, ng mga Romano, ng mga Roman Empire. But it applies to all, to every one of us. Kung titignan natin, uh, ang nagtatalaga ng mga namumuno sa atin ay uh, ang Diyos at ang Diyos lamang. No? Ang Diyos at ang Diyos lamang. So huwag natin naisipin na ang uh, gobyerno ay eh, eh, sa Diablo. <laughs> Bagamat uh, masama ang ginagawa kung minsan, um, uh, evil ang kanilang tinotolerate, uh, yung mga evil ginagawa nilang tama, we have to recognize that it is God who has allowed them to reign in order to achieve God's purpose. No? <laughs> ang uh, banal na silta, ang siya magsasabi talaga na God is the one in control of everything. He has given everything. Diba? He has given all authority in Christ. Diba? To, to Christ. God has given all authority to Christ. Christ is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the one who is governing everything. He is, he is a reigning, no? He is currently reigning, seated at the right hand of the Father, and is ruling, oh my God, ruling the uh, affairs of man. Habang nandito tayo, bagamat kung minsan nakikita natin, puro kasamaan ng manang kasamaan ng manang nagiging lagana. Remember, God is still in control, no? God is still in control. Kasi, nung panahon nga nila, ano, diba? nung panahon ng mga Babylonia, panahon ng, from the Old Testament, even nung panahon ng mga early church, no, nung first century church, ni na Pedro, ni na Pablo, ni James, talagang they were being persecuted, yet God is still in control. Tingin nyo hanggang ngayon, His gospel has always been proclaimed. Hanggang ngayon na ipapahayag ang kanyang ibanghelyo. Why? Because God is in control. Pinakailangan natin Hindi lang unawain, kundi lagi natin isipin, lagi natin tanggapin ang katotohanan na ang mamahala ng sanlibutan, buong sanlibutan. Okay, wala iba kundi ang Diyos na siyempre pagkat uh, pinagkalob niya kay Cristo Jesus na mamuno. All authority has been given to me, sabi nga ng Panginoon Jesus, both in heaven and on earth. No? Kaya hindi tayo dapat mag-alala. No? Hindi tayo dapat mag-alala. Uh, kung sino man ang nanalo sa eleksyon na sa atin, sa ating bansa, halimbawa, hindi tayo dapat nalulungkot, natalo yung kandidato ko, pinanalangin ko pa man din. Nag-overnight prayer pa man din kami, natalo yung kandidato ko. Remember, hindi yung panalangin mo. Kaya nga, yun yung sinasabi natin eh. Madalas sa mga Kristiyano, nananalangin, dinidiktahan ng Diyos. Hindi dapat eh. Diba? Kung mananalangin tayo, Lord, kung ako lang, ito ang kagustuhan ko, but God, ano man ang inyong kalooban, Pagpa, tulungan niyo ako magpasakop sa inyo. Diba? Depend on God's sovereignty. Diba? Pasahin na natin na Isaiah chapter 40 verses 23 to 24. Para lang at least it's a good reminder of what uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, said regarding uh, the sovereignty of God. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 23 and 24. Isaiah 40 verse 23 and 24. He brings princes to know and refuses the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind uh, sweeps them away like chaff. So, ano siya na isaya dito? Sino nagtatalaga ng mga namumuno? Ang Diyos, di ba? Natat naitatalaga ba yung mga namumuno na mas maaga o nang nahuhuli? Hindi. Sabi, no sooner are they planted. 
meaning God at the right at his own time no God in his own time appoints rulers at kung kinakailangan na umalis it is God who decides whether they have to go this is from the prophet Isaiah and true indeed nangyari ngayon nung panahon ng Roman Empire when Christ was crucified under the Roman uh, Empire diba? Kaya nga lahat ng empire sa buong kasaysayan ng sandibutan, di ba? Uh, panahon ni na ng mga, mga Grego, di ba? Alexander the Great, panahon ng mga alin? Ng uh, Babylonian Empire, Persian Empire, ng Roman Empire, ng Ottoman Empire. Lahat ng empires na yan talaga naging matindi, di ba? Pero ano nangyari sa kanila? Bumagsak din eh. Bumagsak din, no matter how powerful they are, babagsak at babagsak din yan. Why? Because it is God who designates those who are in authority. Uh, <clears throat> Ayoko na magkomento, pero America, di ba? Akala na America, they will be superpower forever. They should remember the God's word na nung panahon pa lang, walang empire na nag-last forever. No? Walang empire na nag-last forever. It will always what, fall because it is God, only God's empire will reign forever. It, only, it is only God's kingdom that will reign forever where Christ is the king and Christ is the head of the Bible. It's important to see the context of verses 1 to uh, 7, no? patungkol sa submission and authorities because they are God's servant, God appointed them, and it is God. Uh, it is uh, through them, through those in authority that God has appointed, uh, God's purposes are being accomplished. Sila ay mga nagandang Diyos para mga ganap ang uh, <coughs> plano ng Diyos. Pagdating naman sa verses 8 to 10, kawabanggit ni Pablo sa verse 7 na bayaran niyo lahat ng inyong pagkakautang. Di ba? Tinutukoy niya dito yung patungkol sa buwis no? at uh, obligasyon sa mga authorities. And then pagdating sa verse 8, ano sabi sa verse 8? Huwag kang magkaharap ng utang sa... <laughs> oh, wala ka dapat na utang, kumbaga, in short. Maliban sa Pag-ibig. Ang punto ni Pablo dito is what? <clears throat> Bilang kristyano, <clears throat> bayaran mo lahat ng pagkakautang mo. No? Whether yan ay maaaring pera, gamit. Remember, loan debt is not just money. No? Debt could either be property. No? Uh, ang loan, pwede money, pwede property, uh, any form of debt. No? Sabi niya, bayaran lahat ng debt, pero hindi lang natin kayang bayaran ng ganap is what? Yung pagmamahal sa isa at isa. Bakit? Kasi dapat ongoing siya. Diba? Tuloy-tuloy yan eh. Paul, kinikilala ni Pablo na ang utang na hindi natin kayang lubusang bayaran ng ganap ay yung pagmamahal natin sa bawat isa. Pabalikan natin yung tinuro ni Pablo sa Romans 12, di ba? Yung sinabi niya, love must be sincere. Sabi sa verse 9, diba? na napakalaga na dapat ang pagmamahal ay genuine. Again, nireiterate ko doon yung turo ng Panginoon Jesus na dapat mahalin ninyo ang isa't isa dahil malalaman ng buong mundo, ng sandibutan, na kayo ay aking mga alagad kung meron kayong pagmamahal sa isa't isa. Tinanggit na rin ni, ni John, pag-aralan natin sa John, na uh, hindi nagmamahal sa kanyang kapatiran ay sinungaling. Sinasabi ni, first, ni John yan sa kanyang mga episodes na kung hindi mo kayo mahalin ang kapatid mo na higita mo, hindi mo kayo mahalin ng Diyos na hindi mo nakikita. Dahil ang tunay na alagad ng Diyos, tunay na anak ng Diyos, tunay na alagad ni Kristo Jesus, marunong mahal sa kanyang kapatiran. No? Despite that, sabi ni Pablo, hindi natin kaya bayaran ng ganap yung pagmamahal na yan. No? Because uh, yun nga, uh, love for one another, no? fellow men, fulfill the law. And we can never fulfill the law on our own that it is only Christ who has fulfilled the law. Ang punti ni Pablo dito is this. Nire-reiterate na dito yung turo ng Panginoon Jesus. Remember when when uh, the Lord Jesus was approached by someone else and saying, a master, a teacher, sabi niya, uh, what is the greatest commandment of all? Right? Anong sabi ng Panginoon Jesus? Mahalin mo ang Diyos mo with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And second is, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Notice? So nire-reiterate ni Pablo yung uh, binanggit ng Panginoon Jesus doon na love is the fulfillment of the greatest of, of, of the command of all the law. No? Kaya nga, 
the love command cited by Jesus himself in the Theonome Sadal Matthew uh, is that to love one another. Of course, you'll have to love God first. That is given. Bilang anak ng Diyos, bilang uh, alagad ni Christ Jesus, mahalin natin ang Panginoon Diyos at nakikita natin yan sa pamagitan ng ating pagmamahal sa isa't isa. Kaya ang binanggit ito, di ba? Na do not, alin, do not commit murder, do not commit adultery, do not, alin, do not steal, di ba? Bakit? How does the love command? Paano natin nasasabi na yung utos na mahalin ang isa't isa? Eh, kaganapan nitong prohibition. Ano yung prohibition na yun? Yung huwag tayong mamalit niya, huwag tayong tumatay, huwag nakaw, at uh, maingit, maging sakin, maging greedy. Paano nagaganap ng pagmamahal? Yung command na thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. How does love fulfill that command not to do this? Or this prohibition, wala, not command, but prohibition not to commit that. How? Diba? When love is genuine, di ba? Pag genuine yung pagmamahal mo, remember sabi ni Pablo sa Romans 12 na, di ba? Love must be sincere. Pag mahal mo yung kapatiran mo, nanakawan mo ba yan? Hindi, di ba? Pag mahal, tunay na, pag sincere, tunay na mahal mo yung kapatiran mo, mag, magkaroon ka ba ng galit sa pagkamuhi sa kapatid niya? Remember, sabi ni Christ, who hates his brother is guilty of what? Murder, di ba? So, pag tunay na mahal mo yung kapatiran mo, meron ka bang panahon para magkaroon ng tanin ng sama, ng galit, at muhi sa kapatid na yan? Hindi. Meron ka na, you will not commit murder, either hatred or enmity, ba? You will not commit murder. Why? Because genuine love automatically force, also automatically results in you loving that person and not hating that person. Hindi mo na nakawan. Hindi ka mga ngalo niya dahil may genuine love ka sa asawa mo, di ba? Hindi mo gagawin yung ganung klase pag uh, kapasala. May genuine love ka sa kapatiran na yan kasi may genuine love ka. Hindi ka magiging sakin. Diba? Kasi may genuine love ka. You respect and you love one another. Kaya sabi ni Pablo dito, love is the fulfillment of the law itself, di ba? <clears throat> so when we truly love the other, meaning our brethren, we automatically do what we are recommending the Lord for. We do not commit adultery, we do not commit um, stealing, we do not commit, we do not <coughs> murder. No? So, kung titignan natin, uh, binanggit na rin, nakita natin sa Romans chapter 6, di ba? Uh, nakita din natin sa Romans chapter uh, 6 and 7, na we, the we are no longer under the power of the law. Remember yung binanggit natin na? Oh, well, we are no longer uh, under the, the power of, the law has no power over us. Diba? Because we are now in Christ, Christ has fulfilled the law for us. Right? So, remember nung binanggit ni Pablo na uh, love fulfills everything, you have to remember yung pinag-aralan natin sa Romans 6 and 7, na, no, that the law has no longer power over us. Why? Because Christ fulfilled the law. No? Christ fulfilled the law and eventually uh, we now follow the teachings of Christ, no longer the law. Napag-aralan natin yan sa Romans 6 and 7. Kaya sabi natin dito, when Christ came, when Christ came and the gospel was preached, no? yung mosaic law, mosaic law, wala nang bearing. Wala nang bearing. I'm not, I'm not set. Mag sabi ko wala nang bearing, hindi ibig sabihin na, ang um, point ko doon is, you don't obey the Ten Commandments in order to be saved. Hindi. No? Wala nang bearing yung law. Because the law was given nga to the Israelites to set to, for the Israelites to know yung standards ng Diyos na He is a holy God. No? When Jesus came, tinakda niya yung bagong batas. Ano yung bagong batas niya? Mahalig mo ang Diyos with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Love your neighbor as yourself. So, nung kanyang binigyan ng, ng uh, task, yung kanyang mga disipulo, anong sabi niya when he commissioned them? Go ye therefore, di ba? To all nations, di ba? 
teaching them all the things I have commanded you. Lahat ng tinuro mo Panginoon Jesus. Yun ang tinuturo ngayon ng mga disipulo. Kaya nga si Pablo, makikita mo lahat ng surat niya. Romans, kung maalala niyo, Ephesians, study natin sa Colossians, sa Thessalonians, all about Christ. It's all about the teachings of Christ. Christ, Christ. Sa Romans na lang, yun love, eh, di ba? Love, forgiveness, not, not avenging. It's all about Christ's teaching. No? So, ang point ni Pablo dito is that Christ's command to love your neighbor as yourself is you know, the thing that we can never ever pay during our lifetime. Bakit? Kasi ang point doon is dapat habang nabubuhay tayo, we should continue on loving. We should continue on loving. Hindi pa nasabing, ito ah, minahal na kita ah, uh, pinakita na kita ng kabutihan, tapos na. Hindi. We can never discharge that debt of loving one another. Bakit? It will continue until our last breath. No? Loving one another will continue until our last breath. <clears throat> So, importante na makita natin dito na uh, ayun, we are not under the law but rather we are now under grace. We are now under the teachings of Christ. No? <clears throat> Mosaic law are no longer directly applicable to the believer. Now, <clears throat> some some might say, oh, nagiging uh, antinomian ka against the law ka. We're not being antinomian because we still believe in the law of Christ. The law of Christ, because Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Whatever He has taught, kita atin si Musulod. This, yung ilang ko ni Pablo, eh, yung ilagawa ng mga ina Pedro, eh, uh, tinuturo nila all about the teachings of Christ. And then, sa verse 11, 14, makita natin dito yung 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 uh, warning ni Pablo na malapit na yung kaganapan ng iyong kaligtasan. Malapit na yung kaganapan ng iyong kaligtasan. So, nang dapat natin gawin, Dapat ay mamuhay tayo ng nasa liwanag. Ayoko madali nito kasi ang dami natin doctrines na pag-aaralan dyan. And so we will continue this next uh, Saturday sa ating Zoom. Dahil uh, it talks about yung, yung the coming of the Lord. No? Uh, and of course yung response natin as Christians, what, would, what should we be doing? So tutuloy natin yan next Saturday. Yeah. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall Jesus Christ.